Welcome to Chosen Generation, an outreach of Divine Eagles Ministry with the mandate to preach God's word based on the Bible that we change your life forever. And there's some people right now telling me, you ready for the school? I have no education. I have no background. Do you know who I am? Do you know my color? Do you know? Do you know my father? I don't care. Your father right now today, a believer, is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And so he has transformed you from within out. Hallelujah. And so when he transforms a man, you are no longer an ordinary person. Every day is God's day, but the day you believe is your day. You welcome once again to Chosen Generation. I'll be your host today. This is Reverend I.K. Tober from Divine Eagles Ministry. I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much. He's asking that you trust in his finished works. He wants you to be a child of the Most High. And today as we get into the word because this is his day that he has made for you you are in the land of the living you have every cause to glorify him you have every cause to say daddy i love you just because you first loved me and so we thank you father for your power we thank you for the power of the holy spirit we thank you for the ministry and spirit you've given to protect us in every way blessed be your holy name for in jesus name we have prayed amen you're welcome once again to chosen generation and so let's get into a word of prayer father in the name of jesus we want to thank you for your word that is coming forth we thank you for the ability to minister your word we thank you for your children that are listening to this word holy spirit Give them understanding, let there be revelations, deep revelations, and let lives be transformed forever in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, our topic today is grace by faith, living. Grace by faith. We've been talking about faith for a while right now. We talked about faith by works, walking by faith. And so, when we talk about grace by faith, living a life of grace by faith, we're simply saying that God has made something available. I established the fact that, you know what? That Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me, and he said, it is finished. So whatever your situation may be right now, I want you to relax and know that God says it is finished. And when he says it is finished, it totally means that it is finished. So when we talk about this, we said faith is believing God. We also said faith is not just believing, but you take an action. You do something. There's something for you to do. You are not blessed by the things that you do because it's a free gift. Salvation is free, but there is you believing God and taking an action and doing what God has called you to do. So I pray that as the segment goes, that I can explain to you how you receive what God has made available by grace, by faith. Because when Jesus died, he said, it is finished. He gave up the ghost. That is, he took your pain, he took your debt, he took everything that is not working in you and he took it with him. But you are living in a new dispensation right now as a child of the Most High and as a believer in the blood of Jesus. Your life will be transformed forever in the name of Jesus. So faith is voice activated. You speak when you believe. We did say that God created the world in Hebrews 11 verse 3. We said God created the world by faith. Everything he did was by faith. And so when you activate your faith by your voice, you take a step of faith and you will see it come to fruition in the name of Jesus. You see, when we talk about grace by faith, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to start reading from verse 4 to 10. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you understanding of this. When I learned this for myself, my life changed forever. And I pray that wherever you are right now, 
I believe that you and I carry the same DNA as believers. If you are not a believer, you are not qualified for this. Sorry about that. But I'm going to give you an opportunity for you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Because as a believer, if you are not functioning in this particular place right now, I pray today. As I share this good news with you, that you begin to function and operate in this manner. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy. You see, God is merciful upon us. God is rich in mercy. That is, he's ready to forgive you. You might say to me, woman of God, you know, I've been living in sin. It's okay. It's not okay to live in sin, but it's okay for you to confess your sin to Christ and you will be forgiven because he's a merciful God. He says, for his great love, we are we, he loved us. So he loves you so much. He no longer wants you to live in that pain. He no longer wants you to live in sin. He has given you the ability to live a life of victory. You see, a lot of people are challenged. And one of the reasons why so many believers are struggling with Christianity. Maybe in the past you've been told, oh, don't do this. Oh, don't do that. Oh, don't do this. And then you're like, oh my God, all the good things on earth, they don't want me to do it. How do I live a life of faith? How do I live as a Christian? Yes, you can live a life as a Christian. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you. You, you know, most of us are trying to do this for God and do that. No, God doesn't want you to do anything for him. He wants you to receive what he has given to you. He wants you to receive what he has made available to you he has given you a whole lot of stuff and above all he's giving you his son jesus christ so because he loves you so much in verse 5 he says even when we were dead in sin had quickened us together with christ by grace ye are saved did you hear that we are quickened with christ and by the grace of god you and I have been saved by what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. We have been set free. Praise his holy name. So you are saved. You are no longer living in that place of despair. You are no longer living in that place of what. So you have been saved, children of the most high God. And he's saying to you right now, and raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities, far above rulers of wickedness in high places. Yes, are there going to be challenges? Yes. But are you going to overcome every single one of it? Why? Because of Jesus who sacrificed his life for you and for me. And so by grace you have been saved. He has raised us together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My goodness. I wanted to pause for a minute because I just want to scream. I have preached myself happy right now. I just want to scream around and run all over the place. Why? I am seated together with Christ in heavenly places. So are you. You are seated with Christ right now in heavenly places. He wants you to know that. And so when you understand that you have been given such a position, you no longer have to fear. You no longer have to worry like others worry. And it makes life a lot easier for you. Have you seen you're going through the same situation with your friends? But you're not mad, you're not upset. You just find that you have the spirit of joy going in you. Why? Because you have received what has been made available by grace. You have received it by faith. This is very confusing for those who do not understand the word of God. God's grace is not a license to sin. God's grace is for you to live a life of victory. God's grace is for you to live a life of holiness. God's grace is a, for you to live a life of sanctification and justification. God's grace is not disgrace. No. God's grace is sufficient for you. The Apostle Paul said, I labored more than them, but yet not I. It was by the grace of God. And so that grace is being given to you right now. Verse 7 says that in the age to come, he might show his exceeding riches of grace, his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. That's what I've been saying. God is so kind. For by grace ye are saved through faith. This is the deal. Some of us say I'm a grace preacher. Some of us say I'm a faith preacher. Let me tell you, you have to receive both hands. You have two hands. You can't walk with one. 
without using the other one. You need both to work together. So this is very essential and is a basic requirement for us as believers. I repeat that verse again. For by grace ye are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. So what God has made available through Jesus Christ, you receive it by faith. See, when you receive a gift, what happens? You take the gift, isn't it? If you gave your child a gift, you went and you bought your son a bicycle, a little one, and he's a young man, what is he going to do? He's going to go out there and ride that bicycle and just, he will be excited. He will be all over the place. And he will want his friends to know, I got a new bike. You know what happened? You made it available and he received it. He believed it. In fact, before you even bought it, most kids that I know, if you tell a kid, I'm going to buy you a bike, you know what that kid is going to do? They keep on reminding you every day. Mom, you say you're going to get me a bike. Mom, you say you're going to get me a bike. Not until you get that bike, you're not going to have peace. And you teach your kids how to believe, even when you have not bought the bike, how to say, no, mom, I know by faith, even if you think you don't have the money, I know by faith you're going to have it. Amen. Teach them how to operate in faith. And so it is not by what we have done. It is a gift from God. Just like you bought that bike for your child. It's a gift from you to your child. So also, grace has been bestowed upon us by God. Verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes, some of us have been, you know, Christians for so long. But yet you are powerless. I'm sorry to say that. You have known Jesus Christ all of your life, yet you are not performing anything. Yet you pray and nothing is working because you have not received what God has given to you. It is free. It is not, but I have seen people who have been in the same place for 30 years and nothing is working. They just do it as a ritual. Sunday in, Sunday out. Sunday in, Sunday out. I pray your life is not like that. When you walk, you are a child carrying signs and wonders with you. He says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That tells us something. That a greater one in us. He said he that is greater in us is greater than he that is out there in the world. John 4, 4 tells us that. You have a greater one living in you. But it's not for you to boast. <laughs> it's a gift. And so, verse 10 tells us, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Before you were formed in your mother's belly, according to Jeremiah 1.5, God knew you. <laughs> Jeremiah said, God called me a prophet. <laughs> Psalm 139 verse 14 tells us, He knows us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So before that time, he knew you and he has created you for great works. So receive today what God has given to you by grace. By faith, receive it. Welcome to Chosen Generation, an outreach of the Vine Eagles Ministry with the mandate to preach God's word based on the Bible that we change your life forever. And there's some people right now telling me, you know, I didn't go to school, I have no education, I have no background. Do you know who I am? Do you know my color? Do you know? Do you know my father? I don't care. You're a father right now today. If you're a believer, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. And so he has transformed you from within out. Hallelujah. And so when he transforms a man, you are no longer an ordinary person. Every day is God's day, but the day you believe is your day. You're welcome once again to Chosen Generation. I'll be your host today. This is Reverend I.K. Tover from Divine Eagles Ministry. I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much. He's asking that you trust in his finished works. He wants you to be a child of the Most High. And today as we get into the word because this is his day that he has made for you you are in the land of the living you have every cause to glorify him you have every cause to say daddy i love you just because you first loved me and so we thank you father for your power we thank you for the power of the holy spirit we thank you for the ministry and spirits you've given to protect us in every way Blessed be your holy name, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. 
a great man of God. Dr. Craft O'Donnell was the one I took this phrase from. I learned it from him. I didn't start, start with it. Amen. And he said, grace makes and faith takes. Grace makes and faith takes. What God has made available through his son, Jesus Christ, by faith you have received it. And when you have this balance, don't be one-sided. I walk by faith. No, no, grace. No, no. There is no such thing. These are not ideologies. These are not doctrines. Oh, faith doctrine. Oh, the, the blab it. Name it and claim it. Listen, if you don't name what you want and believe in your heart that you receive, you're going to have a problem. You are not going to have whatever you're believing God for. And so let's go to the book of James right now. As we get into the book of James, the book of James made it so clear to us in James 2. James, the brother of Jesus, tells us, gives us details. But time will not permit us, but whatever time allows us, we will continue later in our series. He says in James 2 verse 14, he says, What do it, does it profit, my brethren? Though a man says he has faith and has not what can faith save him? You have faith and not works. And the works we are talking about here is not what you do. I said faith is action. And so he's saying, if a brother or sister be naked or a destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit it? My goodness, and so many of us are like this. People come to you. You have it. This is different if you don't have it. People come to you. You have what they need. But you know what? You're going to tell them, Oh, oh, may God bless you. May God protect you. And guess what? You send them away without it. And he's saying that is wrong. When people come to you, they came to you by faith. You have prayed by faith. He says, if somebody is sick, he said, let the elders gather and pray and anoint that person. You are praying, you are anointing that person. But if there's something for you to do, if, if that person is hungry and you cannot give that person some money or some food, something is wrong with that picture. So James is saying to you and I today, don't just be that one who says you have faith. Be that one who does something. Even so, faith, if he had not works, is dead by being alone. So if you say, I have faith, which is what I just said, and you are not doing anything, it is dead. Ye men say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith with works. Hallelujah! I will show you my faith with works. That is, you believed, you received what God has made available for you. You can pray for somebody else. You can lay your hands. There's a mountain in your life right now. Open up your mouth and speak and say, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that mountain will move. You know, in Acts 13, <laughs> Elamas, the sorcerer, he saw Paul and Silas as they were ministering. What happened to him? He went there and he said, oh, you know what? He tried to disrupt them. And what did Paul say? He caused him to be blind. And he left there blind. And you know, it was, he lost his sight immediately because he was trusting the word of God. That was faith with works. Apostle Paul knew that God had given him the word. He spoke to that mountain. And that was the mountain at that time. And he spoke to that mountain. And that mountain was checked immediately. What mountain is in your life right now? I want you to speak. And if you are that person, you don't know what to do. Our phone number is flashing through the screen. I want you to call. We have qualified prayer partners and they will pray with you and help you and lead you in the way that you should go. And if you belong to a Bible-believing church, ask them to teach you. But we are here to help you. Whatever you need, we want you to contact us and we will lead you in the way that you should go. There is the right way to go. It is not just saying I have faith and no works or I have works without faith. Both grace and faith, they intermarry and they walk together. And so he said to them, he said, don't just say you have faith and not have works. And in verse 18, 
He says, Ye, a, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, I have works. Show me their faith with works. Verse 19, talking about believing. He says, Thou believes that there is one God. <laughs> I had to laugh at this. You believe that there is a God. Do you know the devil also believes the same thing? He tells us right there. He says, Thou does well. The devil also believes and tremble. <laughs> Don't just say, I believe there is God, but I'm not doing anything. God is going to fight my battles, yes. But God needs your mouth to be able to pray. God needs you to speak to that mountain. God needs you to resist. Don't just sit down and have your hands behind your back and say, you know what? The devil is going to leave me because I'm a child of God. No. He wants you to speak to that situation. He wants you to open up your mouth wide. And he will fill it. And he will give you the right words to speak. And as you study the word of God, and what are you speaking? Is it my words? No. It's the word of God. The word of God does not return back void. But it will accomplish that which it has been said. In Isaiah 55 verse 11, that is what the word of God is. And he will hasten it in his time. You know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. But he wants you to speak. And so I encourage you in this season, if you want to walk by faith, and grace together into married. He's saying right here, but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And in 21, he says, what was not Abraham our father justified by works? And when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar, I stopped there. He offered his son. I'm going to continue from there. He offered his son, Isaac. Abraham walked by faith. He received what God had made available by grace. So I pray today that you will receive what God has made available to you. Child of the Most High God, stop crying. It's okay. All is well with you in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that the Lord will give you strength. I pray right now that the Lord will saying help us your way i pray right now that you will learn to trust in him that you will know that by grace you will receive what god has given to you by that grace by faith receive it today i know that jesus loves you we love you too here from divine eagles ministry and we say that god loves you we love you keep walking by faith because what jesus is lord be blessed Amen. Peace. Welcome to Chosen Generation, an outreach of the Vine Eagles Ministry with the mandate to preach God's Word based on the Bible that we change your life forever. And there's some people right now telling me, you're hiding from the school, I have no education, I have no background. Do you know who I am? Do you know my color? Do you know? Do you know my father? I don't care. Your father right now today, if you're a believer, is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And so he has transformed you from within out. Hallelujah. And so when he transforms a man, you are no longer an ordinary person. Every day is God's day, but the day you believe is your day. You're welcome once again to Chosen Generation. I'll be your host today. This is Reverend I.K. Tober from Divine Eagles Ministry. I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much. He's asking that you trust in his finished works. He wants you to be a child of the Most High. And today as we get into the word because this is his day that he has made for you you are in the land of the living you have every cause to glorify him you have every cause to say daddy i love you just because you first loved me and so we thank you father for your power we thank you for the power of the holy spirit we thank you for the ministry and spirits you've given to protect us in every way blessed be your holy name for in jesus name we have prayed amen and as we get into the word we're going on part b living by grace and faith living by grace and faith you see we talked about part one that we have been saved by grace through faith god saved you and 
It is by faith that you receive that grace. Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. But how did we receive it? By faith. So whatever you do not receive, if I stretched out my hand and I gave you a gift, if I gave you this pair of glasses and you don't take it, guess what? It stays back with me. But if I gave it to you and you take it, guess what? Then you have received what I've given to you by faith. So in order for us to go through, I want us to go back and look at it. We say faith is the substance of things, hope for evidence of things, not see. It is a title deed. And we say when we walk by faith, we do not walk by sight. We also said that faith is what connects us to what God has made available to us. And so, as we continue in this word, it says faith. You know, the Holy Spirit gave me this. Faith is not blind. Some people will say faith is blind. Listen to me and listen God. Faith is not blind. Faith is not within your five senses. You know, you have the sense of smelling. You have the sense of tasting. You have the sense of hearing, touching and feeling. Faith is none of these five. Faith for me, I call faith the sixth sense. I call faith the power of the Holy Spirit, whereby the Holy Spirit leads you in the way that you should go. Faith is simply walking in the spirit and not in the physical. When you begin to walk in the physical, things will not look right. But when you begin to walk in the spirit, you begin to walk in such a manner that your life will never remain the same. So child of the most high, you see, we were talking about in the book of James that faith without works is dead and that you need faith with works. You can say, I have faith and I don't have works. And what is the works? Is the grace that has been given to you, the action that you are going to take. Why, why are you at the doctor's office? If you didn't even have faith, if, if, if that's God's will for you to die of sickness, you didn't have to go to the doctor. But you went to the doctor. But when you get to the doctor, you need faith to receive that healing. God created everything. For some of us, it's going to be a miracle. For some of us, it takes faith to even take the medication. So if that's where your faith is today, take it <laughs> and be healed. And if you believe in the miraculous, I pray right now that you will receive the healing power of God over your life right now in the name of Jesus. No matter what that pain is, I call you healed. I call you whole in the name of Jesus. And begin to do what you've never done before. Get up. Do something. You haven't been able to eat. Go ahead and eat. You haven't been able to walk. Get up from that chair and begin to move your body and begin to lift up your hands and begin to praise God and begin to thank him right now. By faith, receive it in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us when you pray, believe that you receive. And what are you receiving? What grace has made available. So child of the most high, I want you to get up right now and begin to praise God. Begin to exalt his holy name. Begin to, you see, when the children of Israel are going to go around Jericho, he told them, go around seven times a day. Hallelujah. But at the last day, go around seven times. And after that, they were obedient to the instructions. They said, then blow the trumpet. They blew the trumpet. And the walls came crumbling down. I'm sure you have been blessed hearing God's word from the throne of His grace. You can be part of this program by reaching out to Ross on our various platforms. Partner with the ministry to promote God's word around the world. God bless you.